organizing committee of this conference. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here on this campus of the Western Navy uh, uh, College. Uh, college. And uh, the topic of my uh, lecture is about Jordan's role in the holy places of Jerusalem, particularly what is today called al Aqsa Mosque. And in the past, they used to, to uh, speak about that compound as a Haram Sharif, but I will speak later on about why this term was in recent years, uh, is changing in, in recent years. Um, <clears throat> in the recent two weeks, we heard very harsh expressions from Jordanian officials regarding Israel's policy on the Al-Aqsa compound. If, if I can quote uh, Bishop Hassane, uh, as Prime Minister, he spoke about how Jordan, and he was praising the Palestinians for standing proud as a minaret, um, and he praised those who are throwing stones uh, against the Zionists who defiled the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and uh, the Israel which uh, aims to divide the Al-Aqsa Mosque between Jews and Muslims on time and space. Um, and he added that Jordan prevented it and it, would be, and it will not allow it in the future. So uh, and a few days later, after this announcement, a, a document was um, composed by the Jordanians and uh, was sent to uh, the US administration complaining about Israel's uh, uh, changes in the, in, the, in the holy compound of Jerusalem, the changes of the status quo. Actually, I read this document. Uh, the document is not, doesn't have a specific demands for Israel, but the way that the Jordanians are uh, putting the Israeli violations uh, of the status quo uh, could be understood as the notion or the demand to restore the pre-1967 status quo in a way that the Jordan will be, actually Jordan or the Jordanian Waqf will replace the Israeli police at the compound, in, if I can put the bottom line uh, of that uh, document. So I would like in my presentation to speak about a major question, which, uh, which is what, uh, given that in the past Jordan could contain and live with the Israeli, different Israeli policies regarding uh, the holy um, uh, shrine of Jerusalem, the violation of the status quo, and if there was criticism, mostly the criticism was uh, expressed uh, tacitly in diplomatic ways by uh, some letters sent to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and so on the Prime Minister's office. Why uh, is, uh, why do we see in recent days a very uh, deliberate Jordanian criticism and even, I would say, attacks uh, uh, against uh, Israel's policy in the Holy I will begin with uh, uh, describing the Jordanian interests in Jerusalem and its holy places. Then I will uh, try to uh, explain the Jordanian policy by uh, looking at the challenges, different challenges that Jordan has to uh, cope with. First of all, the construction of the Jordanian narrative regarding the holy places. Second, I would speak about the economic investment of Jordan. You just mentioned, uh, I know, the uh, economic challenge of Jordan. Of Jordan. Uh, the economic investment, investment in Al-Aqsa and uh, and Jerusalem. Then I will speak on three different uh, political challenges, external challenges. One is one of them is also a, an internal challenge, which is this, the Palestinian challenge. It is an external and an internal challenge. And the two others are the Saudi challenge and the Israeli challenge. And the Israeli challenge, of course, is the major one that Jordan has to cope these days, or particularly since. Uh, the reign of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. 
uh, <coughs> at, the, at what happens in Jerusalem. And finally, I will try to, to share with you my uh, insights regarding what is uh, Jordan's uh, what is Jordan's vision regarding the future of Jordanian war in Jerusalem? Okay, so don't, too many uh, uh, challenges here. Anyway, um, I will start with thinking about the Jordanian narrative because it is very important uh, for Jordan to, um, to stress and underline the Jordanian war in the holy places since uh, Jordan uh, or the Hashemites, I would say the Hashemites, not Jordan, but the Hashemite uh, house of Jordan. Uh, since the Hashemites were posted out of uh, the Arabian Peninsula by the Saudis, and uh, they are no longer the guardians of the holy places, but the Saudis are, uh, uh, the Saudi monarch is the Khadim al Harlem is the guardian of the holy shrines of Mecca and Medina, Jordan adapted Jerusalem, the Jerusalem shrine, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, or Ham al-Sharif, as a, a, a replacement uh, of uh, what they lost in, in Arabia. And in the official narrative, you can find a little bit of mythology, such as since 1922 or 1924, the Hashemites uh, were uh, attached to the holy place of Jerusalem by donating money for the renovation of the compound, and uh, <clears throat> which is uh, really, uh, I would say, uh, uh, debated between scholars about the importance of it. Uh, in 1927, when the Al-Aqsa Mosque uh, collapsed, the roof of the Al-Aqsa Mosque collapsed, and the Al-Aqsa Mosque and some other Monuments on the Temple Mount uh, were, were in a crucial need of uh, restoration and renovation. Well, Haj Amir Husseini, the Palestinian Mufti, which is a rival of the Hashemites, to become a rival of the, of the Hashemites, he initiated the renovation. He sent uh, uh, delegations to the, Arab, to the Muslim world to collect uh, and raise funds for the restoration. And if Hashemites donated some money, um, according to my knowledge, and I was working on the WAP uh, archives, it was a, it was a, a modest uh, sum of money. And uh, the one who restored the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Hashemite was saying about the Hashemite kingdom, that they, they claimed that they were those who actually uh, were engaged in the restoration of the of, uh, uh, holy compound. They also underline the fact that Hussein Ibn Ali, the head of the, of the Hashemite house here, he was buried in an Aqsa compound in 1931, um, uh, yes. And, uh, <clears throat> and again, those who initiated to bring uh, Hussein Ibn Ali to be buried in the Aqsa uh, courtyard, uh, was Hajamir uh, Hussein for his own, for his, uh, own political uh, needs. And in 1951, when uh, King Abdullah I was assassinated, uh, when he came to pray at the Aqsa Mosque on one of the Fridays in July, um, he was buried not in the Al Aqsa Mosque, like some other Jordanians later on were buried, from the Schumann family and others. Uh, um, he was buried in Amman, fearing that the Palestinians perhaps would defile his grave. Anyway, uh, between 1948 and 1967, there was a lot of uh, Palestinian criticism against Jordan, that Jordan is not giving enough intention, uh, attention to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was not chosen to be the capital of Jordan. Uh, the capital was Amman. Um, Jordanians did a little, I mean, the Hashemites uh, contributed a little in Jerusalem in order to, to show their attachment to it uh, by, as an example, we spoke about the ceremonies, uh, introducing Yom Elisaw al Miraj, marking the night journey of the Prophet Muhammad from the Holy Mosque to the Father's Mosque, 
as an official uh, holiday of Jordan. And um, in 1959, uh, Jordan changed the status of Jerusalem from a, from uh, a Banadia to Amana, which is more important than Banadia. And in some uh, expressions by King Hussein, by late King Hussein, from time to time we could hear that uh, Jerusalem is the second capital of Jordan, which are only, uh, which were, according to my understanding, only lip service uh, of the Hashemites, or in, in other opportunities, that Jerusalem is the spiritual capital uh, of Jordan in 1965. Well, we have to mention here the renovations, the, uh, the renovations of uh, the Dome of the Rock, and uh, the entire uh, compound in the 1950s, and 1960s, in 1964, it was inaugurated with the presence of uh, 24 uh, represented, with the uh, presence of 20, of 24 representatives from. Uh, Muslim countries as an indication that they recognize the legitimacy of Jordan um, as guardians of Jerusalem and perhaps sovereigns uh, of Jerusalem. In 1965, a stamp, well, one year after the, the inauguration ceremony, and an official stamp was issued uh, in Jordan. Uh, showing King Hussein looking over the Dome of Rock. Uh, uh, as all of this was part of the um, identity construction of uh, the Hashemite uh, uh, house as the guardians of uh, Jerusalem and those who, who need actually Jerusalem and its holy places as part of their legitimacy. Uh, what are the, uh, <clears throat> the interests of Jordan when we speak about uh, the uh, about the narrative? First of all, there is a sincere a sincere uh, care for Jerusalem as the third holiest place of Islam, regardless of of, uh, of any other uh, challenge. I believe that this is a, a, a true care for the third holy space of Islam. <clears throat> Even if uh, the Jordan did not have to have a, a problem of legitimacy. Second, of course, is the challenge of legitimacy for the Hashemite house. Uh, third, is the need for a Jordanian reputation of those who have actually no other resources uh, in the Middle East, but perhaps Jerusalem. And uh, last, last one is uh, to appease the Palestinians, both the Palestinians in, inside uh, Jordan. Palestinians are, as all of you know, they, are, they comprise uh, a majority of the, of the uh, Jordanians. Uh, and uh, also the Palestinians in Palestine uh, the fear that uh, Jordan would become Palestine is always a matter of national security for the uh, Jordanians. And, uh, and of course it is a, a, an interest of the Jordanians versus the different challenges, internal challenges, not only for the Palestinians, but from the Muslim brothers, the, the uh, tribes in the, th in the south, who from time to time uh, are rioting or expressing um, um, criticism against uh, the Hashemite uh, control. In 1967, when Israel took over uh, Jerusalem and its uh, holy places, um, at the beginning uh, there was an Israeli policy that all of us are aware and perhaps suffer from it. Uh, that uh, the Jordanian Waqf, the Waqf which is subordinated to Jordan, also funded by, by Jordan, is, um, um, uh, is the administrator, the administrator of the site. And the Israelis are only patrolling with the police outside the compound and recently also, I mean, uh, more inside the compound and sometimes even storming into the compound. 
but uh, in 1967, for 30 years, actually a, a status quo developed. It, the status quo is not only the, you know, the, um, the principle that the Jordanians are administrators and Israelis uh, have the right to visit as visitors, but not as tourists, but not as uh, worshippers. And, uh, and that the police is, uh, Israeli police is responsible for the protection and, and policing in the site. But it has a series of arrangements, series of arrangements that were coordinated between the Israeli authorities and the WAF. And Jordan was always in the picture. Because, as I said before, the WAF is uh, uh, under the Jordanian uh, subordination, in spite of the fact that uh, the WAF officials are Palestinians. And uh, I would say since the establishment of the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank and Gaza, the, uh, <clears throat> those officials of the WAF have a dual loyalty. They have, uh, they have to maneuver between their loyalty to the, to the Jordan and their loyalty, national loyalty as, as a Palestinian. Now the next challenge is the challenge of uh, the challenge of uh, economic investment. Jordan is not a rich country, um, and uh, the Jordanian had had to invest if they want to keep their uh, link, their uh, official attachment to Jerusalem. They have to invest in restoring and in renovating uh, of the holy compound. Uh, <clears throat> They did it in several times. I just mentioned what they did in the 1950s and 1960s. The Temple Sand uh, renovation uh, the, at the dome of the rock was uh, gold coated uh, at that time. By the way, 80 uh, kilograms of gold was invested in the in the coating work, and uh, <coughs> and uh, from time to time. There was a need, another need to uh, renovate the site in 1992, uh, uh, as an example. King Hussein had to sell a private house in London, near London, in order to fund a restoration, fearing that if he will not uh, invest this money, the Saudis, and I was thinking about the Saudi challenge, the Saudis will invest it, and, and, uh, and for him it was to lose the um, the protection of the holy site. Okay, just let me know when I'm approaching to the end of my time. Okay, seven minutes. Thank you. How much? Seven. Seven. We can go out anybody. Not enough. Not enough. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but, so but what do we call Professor, it? you can also use my couple of minutes. That okay. I have. Okay. I just come <laughs> through. Very, very generous. You. I'm not promising that we will return it. You have the authority. So, <laughs> economic investment in general, I will not go too much into it. Uh, replacing the carpet, establishing a fund uh, headed by Prince Razi Ben Talal, uh, renovating the minbar, and, and bringing it into uh, the compound and so on. Now, the competition with Saudi Arabia is also important. Uh, <clears throat> in 1977, the Saudis initiated to uh, to arrange a twin cities between Mecca and Jerusalem, the, the Hashemite uh, monarch had to undermine it and he successfully did it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the Jordanians are always uh, concerned that the Saudis will come in and take the role of that. That is why, this is why, uh, I would say this is one of the reasons why uh, <clears throat> in uh, the last 30, 40 years, we see that the term al haram sharif is less common, less used. One of the reasons is that the Saudis invested in the 1980s, they invested money via um, a proxy named the Rabitat al-Alam al-Islami, the Arab, uh, uh, the Muslim uh, League, the Muslim World uh, League, uh, invested money in al haram sharif in different projects, and, and some of the money went to the pockets of some of our work officials. And uh, <clears throat> uh, if there is a third haram, the importance of the haramain is, is less 
uh, uh, lucrative as it looked before. So this is one of them. It's not the only reason. The, the real reason is that uh, they were feeling that Israel is, says that uh, the compound is not, the entire compound is not so important to uh, to the Muslims. Only the the mosque, which is at the southern side of the compound, and perhaps there is an Israeli uh, or Jewish initiative to build a synagogue underneath where later on uh, the Mawani Hall was uh, established in the, in the Solomon Stable, what is named the Solomon Stable uh, in the compound. Uh, then they changed the name of the compound from Al-Haram al-Sharif to Al-Aqsa Mosque because everybody in the Muslim world knows what is Al-Aqsa Mosque and also to say to others that even if we do not uh, take off our shoes when we go to the Holy Esplanade to the open space of, uh, of that shrine and even if, we, if the, the kids, there are three, by the way, there are three schools uh, inside the Haram and the boys are playing uh, soccer or football or whatever and even if we play soccer or if we come to picnic in this area because this is perhaps the only open space in the whole city that Muslims can use to come and have some uh, refreshment or, uh, so uh, the entire compound is important uh, uh, for us uh, <clears throat> I will uh, also mention here Jordanians role as protect uh, as uh, those who are active in the international fora to protect the status of Jerusalem, particularly in UNESCO, just to mention uh, the 1980s uh, uh, <clears throat> this uh, resolution that Jerusalem, the whole city of Jerusalem, is uh, a world heritage city in danger. Later on, it was in, added in danger, uh, uh, and other resolutions of the UN and UNESCO, the Jordan was very active in. Uh, in achieving to, to send the message that they, are, that they really care for the importance and they, are, they, they have a responsibility. They are the guardians, and as guardians, they have the responsibility to protect it. I'm coming to the last two issues. One is the competition with the Palestinians, and I will speak more about the, uh, the Israeli policy and Jordan. Regarding the Palestinians, there was a competition, particularly after the establishment of uh, the Palestinian Authority, when Yasser Arafat was sitting at the Mukata in Ramallah, uh, Yasser Arafat nominated uh, a new Mufti, a Palestinian uh, 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 <coughs> Mufti, to replace the Jordanian Mufti, and there were some other frictions between the parties until Yasser Arafat um, agreed to give uh, King Hussein uh, the status of a temporary custodian of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the holy places until Palestine as a new uh, state will be established and then they will have the sovereignty over uh, Jerusalem. Uh, <clears throat> King Abdullah II, succeeding uh, King Hussein, at the beginning he showed a different policy. He, uh, he said uh, something that if I, if I can, if I can uh, uh, make a uh, one person here, like Moshe Dayan in 1967, who said, Why do we need all of this Vatican in, in our uh, domain? It just, uh, it just can cause us headaches. And uh, so for King Abdullah, he didn't have the same attachment as, uh, I mean, religious and spiritual attachment, and perhaps, uh, uh, you know, uh, King Hussein was present at the, at the assassination of uh, his grandfather, uh, uh, Abdullah um, uh, the first, and uh, and he, for him it, it was a different attachment to the to the city and, and Al Aqsa uh, in particular. And King Abdullah at the beginning uh, tried to change the policy, but soon he became aware of that this is a crucial issue for the survival of the Hashemites of Jordan. So it's also an issue of, um, um, one can uh, put it as a national uh, security. Um, <clears throat> and regarding relation with Israel, this is the last point, almost the last point here. 
I would say that um, in, since 2003, Israeli, Israel, when Israel uh, uh, for the first time opened, reopened the site for visitors after three years that it was closed following the ascension of Ariel Sharon, the demonstrative visit of Ariel Sharon to the uh, Temple Mount compound. When it was opened in 2003, the Israeli authorities, with the long arm of the police and the side, gradually changed the status quo. Now, the status quo, what was in the first 30 years, agreed as a different arrangement of the status quo. And the arrangement particularly referred to uh, the uh, conduct of visitation of Jewish groups, of Jewish religious groups, of Jewish if you like to put them ideological or messianic groups, those uh, Temple Mount uh, associations, uh, there was an erosion of the status quo. Erosion from two sides. The Muslims eroded the status quo in different ways. The building and construction of the Marwani Hall and underneath al uh, and many other uh, issues. Uh, I do not have enough time to, to uh, mention all of them. And Israel also eroded the status quo in four, in particularly four, uh, um, <clears throat> four um, uh, points. One of them is that the police is more and more storming into the place when there are violent um, and disorders in the place. The police is storming in the to the open land and also into the Aqsa Mosque. Something which really offends not only the Palestinians in Jerusalem, but I would say in the entire Muslim world. It is really when the pictures that are taken by videos from inside the mosque showing Israeli policemen uh, storming into the mosque, throwing uh, uh, gas uh, pomegranates grenades or, or, or uh, uh, smoking uh, grenades, uh, it is something that. Um, really, I would say, uh, um, <coughs> triggers, triggers uh, violence and even terror. Terror actions, uh, like recent uh, events that we are uh, still perhaps uh, um, seeing in, uh, in, in, in the region uh, nowadays. And uh, this is one. The second is that the uh, arrangement according which the Jewish groups are entering, I mean, not a group like myself and my students, when myself and students are coming to the, to the site, nobody is uh, escorting us or inspecting us that we are violating anything. But when those religious groups are coming and they name them settlers, they identify them, I mean, the Muslims in general, identify them as settlers and they identify their visitation as uh, <coughs> the harm breaking into uh, the, the site, uh, in the past there were small groups. At the beginning, after 1967, only a group of three of the Temple Mount, uh, the Temple, uh, the, the Temple Mount Faithful organization, there were only three at a time could go inside with escorted by a waqf guard and a police guard and a policeman. And then it was changed to five. Then it was changed to nine in order not to allow a minion. And uh, in, nine, in 2015, after one of the crises on, 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 at the compound, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, which was, uh, a, 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 I would say, oh, there was a prime minister. Prime minister. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay, thank you. There was a, there was a, a, an American. Um, the Americans exerted pressure on, on Netanyahu. John Kerry arrived to the region, and uh, Netanyahu had to uh, deliberately say for the first time officially that the Jews are only visitors to the site, not uh, worshippers at, at the site. This is changing in recent, in the last four or five years. Um, the, the Jewish groups, uh, I, and I myself, I was, uh, uh, I was documenting it with, with my camera, with my uh, uh, <coughs> cell phone, that uh, when groups are coming, first of all, they come in large numbers to allow more and more people, like in recent uh, Pesach Passover, 
thousands, three thousands uh, Muslims uh, in five days visited the compound, uh, compared to 100 per day in a regular day. So they come in large groups. The police uh, is uh, uh, <clears throat> depriving the Waqf guards from escorting the, the Jewish groups. And when they arrive to the eastern side of the, of the compound, they are uh, allowed, not a, with a, uh, not, the police is not turning a blind eye as it did in the past, but the police is allowing just protecting that the workers will not be close to them in order for them to pray, not, not loudly, uh, not with all of the, uh, you know, uh, what they need for the, uh, a complete prayer, but uh, <coughs> there is a prayer, and, and this is a significant change of the, of the status quo. This is why the Jordanians, the Palestinians, and others, they believe, and, and for, from their point of view, Israel is dividing the side by space and time. Uh, because, and which explains why the police had to storm in early morning, uh, because after the Salat al Fajr, after the uh, early morning prayer, uh, in, in, at 7 or 7.30, the Israeli visit, the Jewish visitors have to come and, uh, and uh, to visit the site. So uh, to allow them to visit the site, you have to, uh, to take out all of those who um, are uh, disturbing the Jewish visitor or arresting them as the Moabitat and Moabitum did in the past. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I would say that uh, <clears throat> uh, what explains jo Jordan's uh, <clears throat> harsh statesmen and, uh, and uh, expressions and, and the fact that now King Abdullah II is on his way to meet uh, President Biden is uh, the, <clears throat> the expect expectation that uh, Biden will be the savoir, the one who will uh, uh, help King Abdullah to uh, solve the crisis because everything that happens today is under his, his uh, watch. And, uh, it is, it is perceived by Palestinians and others that uh, the Hashemites are, are not really the guardians of the holy place if they cannot guard it uh, um, um, properly. And for them, it is a crucial matter. And I'm not sure how this issue will end. Jordan, Jordan if I would like in one last sentence, speak about the, the vision for the future. Jordan is not, uh, I, I would say that in, in, uh, since the 1990s, since uh, King Hussein's uh, tenure, uh, Jordan is not seeking for sovereignty in Jerusalem or even not in the whole, in the whole city. And uh, what they are uh, seeking is to have something which they call a religious uh, uh, protection or safeguarding of the place or a religious linkage to the site and uh, a symbolic, I would say, uh, uh, role in the administration of Jerusalem via uh, the one. Thank you.